50-year-old Polish immigrant and amateur geologist Stephen Mahalik looked forward to his weekend getaways alone in the Falcon Lake area, 90 miles east of his home in Winnipeg, Manitoba. This was Mahalik's favorite prospecting site. Around noon on May 20, 1967, as he examined a quartz formation, Mahalik was distracted by some unruly geese. He looked up and was transfixed. He says he saw two cigar-shaped objects glowing red in the sky. The following is a recording Mahalik later made of what he saw next. The size, you know, was amazing. And here they're coming down. With speed, I just can't describe it. Amazing speed. Mahalik says one of them stopped, suddenly accelerated, then disappeared. The other landed about 50 yards away. He watched in awe. I hear shh, and I hear a high pitch whistle of running equipment, pumps on high speed. When the tank landed, it was of gray pink color. It's stainless steel and it was pink hot. And I can feel the breeze on my face that that thing is hot outside. There was my notebook, there was my pencil, so I sketched this. Mahalik claims it was round, about 40 feet long and about 10 feet high. His curiosity took hold and he approached the craft. He examined the outside of it, slowly touching the glowing skin with his gloved hand. It was fiery hot, nearly melting the palm of his rubber glove. Mahalik says the craft rotated, turning its grid-like exhaust vent toward him. Seven. The blast of hot gas from the vent knocked him to the ground, setting his shirt and undershirt on fire. The craft suddenly lifted off the ground, according to Mahalik, and soared straight up. He threw his burning shirts to the ground, dazed and in severe pain from burns to his chest and stomach. Mahalik says he wandered around for what seemed like hours before he managed to gather up his supplies. He found his way out of the woods caught a bus, and later that night arrived back in Winnipeg. Still in pain, he rushed from the bus station to nearby Misericordia Hospital, where he was treated for first-degree burns. Mahalik claimed the blast from the craft had etched a grid-like pattern into his abdomen that matched the pattern on the exhaust vent. The next day, Sunday, he was spirited off to the St. Regis Hotel after convincing the managing editor of Winnipeg's highly regarded daily newspaper, the Winnipeg Tribune, that his extraordinary encounter was real. At that time, I said, OK, as any newsman would have done, draw it. I gave him a piece of paper. I think that drawing has become the most famous UFO piece of evidence in the world today. He sat down, he drew it in front of me. I hid it. I talked to him. I called doctors, I called police, and I sure as hell didn't want the Winnipeg Free Press getting the story. Monday's edition of the Tribune led with this headline. Mahalik soon became a sensation worldwide. What followed was one of the most intensely examined UFO cases on record. Over the next two years, Mahalik's burns kept recurring, and no one could explain why. He was examined by more than a dozen physicians in Canada and the United States, including doctors at the Mayo Clinic. An investigation by the Royal Canadian Air Force concluded that the abdominal burns sustained by Mr. Mahalik remain as unexplainable as to the source of the burn. The Mayo Clinic psychological report concluded that Mahalik was not prone to delusions, hallucinations, or any type of emotional disorder. Perhaps the most influential investigation was conducted under the auspices of the United States government. The chief investigator, physicist Roy Craig, is now retired and raises llamas on his Colorado ranch. His job was to examine UFO reports and find physical evidence. We responded to the Falcon Lake report as soon as we could. Now, there's no value in, in seeing a landing site that somebody's had a chance to go back and prepare for me to look at. But if we could get back and find a landing site that had not been seen by anyone else or been altered, 
by human beings, there may be something there that we could use as real evidence that he had a real experience. I mean, comparable with the appearance of human beings on Earth. Two weeks after the encounter, Craig flew to Winnipeg and joined Mahalik on his first return to the landing site. He guided us on what he said was a big search for the site. Actually, we just roamed around in, in uh, haphazard circles, uh, coming back to about where we started and didn't go very far at all. He was trying to give us the impression of leading us on a search for a site. And we all concluded that the site probably did not exist. With no apparent physical evidence, Craig classified the case as without merit. The American investigation was over. University of Manitoba astronomer Chris Rutkowski, believing the government reports left many questions unanswered, launched his own investigation. In 1994, he published The Falcon Lake Case, Too Close an Encounter, in the respected Journal of UFO Studies. The terrain around uh, the site is very rugged, uh, very rocky. Uh, the brush is very, very dense. The trees all look alike. The rocks all look alike. And to a person who's disoriented, uh, not feeling very well, it might be very, very difficult to find the exact site after some period of time has elapsed. Skeptics disagreeing with Rutkowski also do not believe that Mahalik would make physical contact with an extremely hot object he assumed was a UFO. But this does not surprise his son. He is the kind of fellow that fear is not in his vocabulary. Not that he's a fearless man, but that when he sees something he doesn't understand, he doesn't fear it. He just chooses to understand it. Skeptics wonder why no one else saw the craft. I talked with the people who were in charge of managing the fire tower. It was manned at that time, and the people were absolutely certain that there was no way that two vehicles, like he described, glowing as they were, could fly into that space and out again. There was no way that that could happen without their seeing it. My conclusion on that case is that all the evidence that I found pointed toward hoax rather than a real experience. And not even a, a skillful hoax, a, a very inept hoax. Mahalik became bedridden and incapacitated in the 1980s. Was this hardworking and devoted family man capable of crafting such a hoax? For my dad to fabricate something as large as this would require more than I think he had. Uh, more than he has. He's a simple man. He grew up and lived a very straight, hard life. This was no con man. This was a man who later went down a mail. They couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure it out. The doctor I had there couldn't figure it out. I am not about to be taken by anybody. This guy didn't take me. This guy was legit. Stephen Mahalik never wavered from his story. He believed he had encountered a UFO. Roy Craig and the U.S. government disagreed, but they never classified the case as solved. The official report lists Mahalik's sighting as unexplained.